I'm mean, sorry, Dave, just just jumping in. I'm, so I'm I'm a I'm one of the developers been chugging away that you know on the, on the back end of the system. And uh, here you go. Here, here's an object. This is my my collection class and my collection of I don't know what items uh, they're going to be. And you now have to present those that that collection of items in a list box. Mm -hmm. uh, how how am I going to do that? I mean, can I do that? In, can I do that in Blend? Yes, yeah, very so, again, it's very similar to the way you're doing ASP.NET. You have a, a bit like a repeater. You just have a. Uh, an items template that just specify the XAML that you want repeated for every item and then boilerplate it with the names of the properties that you want substituting in there and it'll just repeat it. Just okay. Your list. It's very easy to do. So that's great for an ASP on that chat. I'm a designer. I wish I were a designer sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Martin is a designer. Yeah. Um, you know, not familiar with that. You know, I'm just giving him a, a, a class, I've given him an object. Yeah. Okay. I mean, how, how, what are you going to do? So there's a couple of things I can do to get this data or get a representation of what this data might look like uh, into the design time of Blend to sort of mm -hmm. design a user interface uh, around the data that's coming from Paul's class. So the first way, uh, and probably the simplest and, and, and quickest way, uh, especially if the data hasn't really been completely fleshed out and it's still a work in progress, uh, is to create a, a simple XML file um, which contains, you know, XML, uh, it's got you know the top level item, and then you know attributes that uh, tie in with uh, tie in with the uh, properties that you have in your CLR object. So to create a, an XML file that has an array of items, has a list of items, it's very easy to incorporate that and add that to your Blend project, and then use that as a data source to be right. into your design time from. So potentially, you, you, your designer, develop, your UI developer and designer working together on the UI, mm -hmm. the UI developer, interactive developer, you want to call it, XML. he can just throw together a piece of XML so that you guys can be working on the UI. Yeah. And then, um, can, can you show me in Blend what that, how you then bind to that, or just give me a, a sense of that? I can, I can show you that, yeah. Sure. yeah. Okay. Get back and try and get my, my camera nice and steady again. So I'm just going to fire okay. up a brand new instance of Blend. And we're going to go straight in and do a, a brand new project. That's except the file name. Okay, so I'm going to add a uh, XML uh, data source. So I can, you can see here in the project panel, I've got a data uh, panel right here. And I'm going to click on Add XML. And in fact, uh, what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to take uh, an RSS feed. I think that's probably a, a great thing to, to, to demonstrate. So if I go to, oh no, not the BBC, <laughs> excuse me, typo. If I go to the BBC website and select a news RSS feed. So what we've got here is we've got a fairly typical RSS feed. I'm going to take the XML far from that RSS feed. So you've copied the URL. I've copied the URL, right, I have Internet Explorer. Okay. And I'm going to pop, in, pop it into the URL for the XML data. So this could right. be a local file on your file system, you know, something that perhaps Paul would have given me as uh, a representation of his data. Okay. Uh, today it's going to be a, an online RSS feed. Okay, great. I'm going to hit OK. Sorry, folks, just trying to, just be struggling to keep the screen still. Eh? That's okay. Um, what we can now see in the data panel is it's now looked at that XML file uh, and kind of shown me all the items that are in that XML file. And I can see here that one of them is actually a, a, an array of things called items. Mm. Uh, and within that, I've got a, a, an article title, a link to it, and a description. So to actually begin to design a piece of user interface around that data, all I need to do is click on item, drag it in, up will pop a menu saying, oh, what kind of repeating control would I like to rep use to represent this data? So I might say list box. Select list box. The field that I'm going to bind this information to is the item source of the list box. So I'm going to just OK that. And I'm now into a data template design, which is actually going to allow me to select um, what things, what, what pieces of uh, information from that data I'd actually like to have appear in my user interface. So we're now creating the little template that's going to get repeated for every item. Got you. So for every title, we're going to um, show some text yep. in a text block, and, uh, and so it goes on. So there you are. Say I just want the title and description drawn here. You've got a category tick, did you mean to do it? Oh, no, I don't want category. 
In fact, yeah, why not, why not, why not have cash green? It's, it's not bad. And I've got actually got a little preview of what is going to appear in the list box right here. So now when I click OK, I've actually got that data. So this is at design time. I'm not running the application, but it's actually pull down that um, pull down that information. And it would be very simple for me to now pop in here, say I want to edit the generated item template of this list box. So I've right clicked, come through here. And now I can begin to you know, do things like I might want to apply some kind of uh, style or color. Uh, obviously it kind of looks a little clearer than Right, got gotcha. you. But you know, you can you can you can see what we're. Uh, mm. what now we're I can doing. use the designer on that little bit of XAML that we've created and, yes. and make it pretty. That's it. So yeah, this is actually uh, design time stuff. And now when I run the application, naturally I'll see the, uh, the fruits of my design <laughs> design labour. Fantastic. So, yeah. Okay, and um, so that's a bit of XML. Mm -hmm. And now, now things have moved on a bit in the project, and I've now got, you know, my developer's caught up doing my mid-tier. Yep. And he's given me, you know, a, 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 an object, a, you know, .NET CLR object, which is a collection okay. of those things, of those items. What, 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 how would you deal with that? Nearly identical experience, actually. So, uh, funny you should ask. Here is a. It's, this is a kind of a bit of a. Blue beta Here's one I prepared time. earlier. Blue Peter. Blue Absolutely. Peter staff. All those who, who are sort of age remember Blue Peter. <laughs> so I'm in Visual Studio, uh, and I'm actually just going to quickly insert a couple of snippets of code, which are going to create a, a new type of CLR object and a, uh, a, a another type, which is a collection of those objects. So the key thing here is that, unlike with XML, where you could do it all just in Blend, we, we do need to write just a little bit of code here to initialize the the object to which we're going to bind. That's it? right. I'll show that in a second. So okay. this first this first class I'm going to add is. You know, whatever you do, I mean, you're going to have to have an object. And in this case, uh, for those of you that know me, I love Xbox games, so I've created a, <laughs> a, a class of type game, and this has a game title, a game publisher, a genre, uh, but also a, a, an image. So this might be a class that's been passed to you. I mean, I could either be the source code, or it could actually be, um, you know, a, 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 in a separate assembly. That's right. That's part of the solution. That's it. We've, we've included, we're going to put it all in the same assembly in this instance, mm. but absolutely, it could be in, a, in another assembly. The next thing I'm going to add is actually a game object collection. So this is a, a class that inherits from observable collection of game. Uh, can you see that? Yeah, it's a, it's yeah, just about. Okay. Hopefully they can see it as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but what we have here is in the constructor, in the initializer for games, uh, I'm actually reading in an XML file which is going to create an array of game objects. So okay. even though I'm reading an XML file, this is definitely CLR object binding, mm, just, to, mm. just to set the record straight on there. If I save this, I can now open this up in Blend. So basically, just to summarize, we've got, we've got collection class, it's yep. a collection of games, collection of games. Game, game objects, and in the, initi and, and the initializer, you, you're, just, well, you're just populating that, essentially. Populating that. Okay, yeah. great. All right. So I mean, obviously, the the, the difference here though is um, in the in the final application. I mean, it, it's probably likely that that class will be populated mm. based on some event that happens at runtime. And mm -hmm. um, the reason I've put that in the initializer is because we want to do some design time. We want to look at some data at design time. Yes. Uh, so that's 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 why we're doing that in the initializer. But normally, when it comes to the final release, you would take the initializer code out and then wait for that to be populated. Hmm. So I'm going to pop, pop this open, and now if I jump to my property uh, project panel, instead of adding XML data, I'm going to add CLR object data. And if I scroll down, so what are we looking at there? These are all the these, these are all the uh, so it's looked at all the references that I have in this application. So right, okay. WPF presentation stuff, some system references, all the CLR objects I could potentially bind to. And if I come down to my actual Xbox game search uh, application, you can see that I've got a CLR object game, and I've also got a CLR object game collection. Right, okay. So I'm just going to select OK. That's now populated the data panel with some uh, with a, an array of game collections, so I now know that because that says array, I can pick that up 
and drag it on. And say that I want to bind this, let's say to this box. And let's bind this to the item source. And it's again, it's looked at the CLR object, and it's actually analysed it and said, okay, it's got a title, a publisher, a genre, and it's also got a box image. And I can use this data template editor uh, to actually begin to create what I want you know, this to look like. So this is our template editor again, isn't it? This is our template editor, so I've got a picture right. of the box and you know, some other things there. Fantastic. And there we go. So this is actually, yeah, this is, this is data, CLR object data at right. design time. Fantastic. Okay, so all we need to do really was, the key, the key thing here, obviously having been past the, the actual objects, is to just be able to initialize those so our, our designer or interactive, you know, our developer who's developing UI needs to be aware of how to initialize those objects so they can be viewed at design time. That's right, that's, that's right. And it, it, it is just a, you know, just a small thing that it might be go to the database and pull a couple of objects down. In this case, it's have a quick look at a, an XML file and create some objects from that XML. Mm. Um, but as long as there's something in the initializer for, for that collection class, you'll be able to see something at design time. Super. That's great. Thank you for that, guys. Well, um, we're almost out of time. Um, just swing back around here. Hopefully, um, that's given you a little bit of insight into some of the work these guys have been doing. Uh, you know, sort of real world um, work they've been doing around WPF. Some of the challenges faced with um, you know working with designers and developers together. Some of the different approaches that can be taken. Um, any particular last words, guys? Or we think we've covered most of the things we wanted to cover. Covered just about everything, really. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Well, sorry, Martin, go on. You go. Oh, I was going to do kind of like a Jerry Springer final word thing, just for you know for, for any designers that might be watching. Um, is, and it's, it, it's really just to say again that with WPF for designers, uh, if, if they're going to work alongside developers in, in a way that's kind of really effective, there is a learning curve, and you know there are things that. Uh, they're going to have to, you know, begin to understand. Same as developers, there's a learning curve for developers, but there, there is also one for designers, and they're going to have to begin to understand, you know, what is it that is behind building software. You know, they're going to have to perhaps begin to understand the concept of what a control is. Maybe they don't have, they don't need to know the technical detail of, of what a control is, but begin to understand, you know, behaviours and interactions. And in fact, a lot of interactive designers kind of already are aware of these things anyway. Um, but yeah, my probably again my top tip is if you're going to go into WPF design, uh, is to you know is to perhaps download Visual Studio or begin to look at the XAML, begin to look at what's been created behind the scenes, because I found that what has really kind of accelerated my personal development of WPF is actually understanding what happens uh, in the background and not simply relying on you know what I can do in the design service surface. So uh, yeah, that would be my super. No, that's great, Martin. Major. All right, guys. Well, I hope uh, you all enjoy that, found it helpful, and uh, that's us signing off. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.